they were pretty much on pace with the Lions as far as losing those. So. Um, but yeah, the Kawhi shot, um, he gets the inbounds, and then Embiid is guarding him. Um, some, I don't remember who the other person was that was on him. I think Ben Simmons was on him. Yeah, so I mean, you got both of these guys, like Embiid definitely 7 foot, Ben Simmons like 6'10", 6'9", something like that. So you got, they're both taller than Kawhi, these long, like, alien type guys guarding Kawhi. Yeah, and he's, he's literally, he's literally like, going all along the three point line, which, which, nowadays it kind of drives me crazy, not as much throughout the game, but when you see, like, in March Madness and at the end of games, it's like you take all this time to draw up plays, and the best thing is just someone just dragging up the three. Yeah, yeah. But, but for him, I mean, he kind of decided, like, it's my team, it's gonna, right. I'm gonna get the criticism if you lose. And, I'm and gonna, it wasn't a three, but still, it was yeah. a, a, a fadeaway, kind of sideways yeah. fadeaway. He wasn't ball. trying to drive into the lane or anything like that, like, he was gonna shoot from outside. Um, and then it was that whole same thing with the Dame Lillard shot, with like, oh, it's a bad shot. It's like, well, I mean, if it goes in. No, like, it's still, if shots can go in and be bad. Right, and then defense can be good, and then the result can still be right, bad. Exactly. Like, there's nothing exactly. else you can do except double team him into the corner like that. And then right. it's like the Angel the Angels the outfield bounce, where it's like <laughs> just short enough so that it bounces up and then bounces back. It's like, I think it was like four bounces or something like that. And I'm, I'm in the middle of uh, CPK, and I'm just like, oh! And all the guests are <laughs> around. I'm like, yeah, and like, game seven. Game seven. <laughs> Another quote, okay, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, that game was nuts. Um, Raptors and Bucks is going to be insane. It's pretty much yeah. uh, two teams, both centered around their one guy. Uh, I think it's going to be more entertaining than if the 76ers would have been playing the uh, Bucks. It's going to be pretty much Kawhi versus uh, Giannis, who have been like the two best players in the playoffs so far, yep. consistently. Um, two aliens against each other. It's going to be awesome to see those guys go head to head. Um, and then, uh, the first game, the first game, uh, Denver kind of gave it away a little bit. I don't know, Stretch has that whole thing where it's like not over till it's over. I'm kind of more cynical to where you had a 17 point lead. All you have to do is not, not have an 18 point deficit in the second half. Um, that's, over, speaking as somebody who had money on Denver, of course. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. No ill will there. Uh, but, I mean, Jokic is out of the playoffs now. I think he kind of, like, announced himself this year. It's going to be interesting to see if anyone's willing to go there and play with him and uh, Jamal Murray. And then uh, you have the Trailblazers uh, playing the Warriors tonight. That's going to be awesome. And he spreads, like, seven and a half. So you're going to have arguably the best two backcourts in basketball um, in Damian Lillard and C.J. McCollum against uh, Clay Thompson and Steph Curry. Durant's out tonight. And the spread is still seven and a half. So, to me, if you're... If you're the Trailblazers, it's, I hate saying he's in a must-win game, but if you can get this first game on the road without Kevin Durant, like, he's going to come back either in game two or three, I'm pretty sure, so if you can get up a game, that would be huge, so just steal yeah. home court and then uh, get a game before he comes back, because if it's seven, seven and a half now, if he comes back, they're saying it's going to be like ten, ten and a half, something like that. Maybe, yeah. Um, and then uh, the other thing going on in the NBA tonight is uh, Stretch's uh, NBA Finals, pretty much, it's... Uh, <laughs> it's the, the Knicks. The Knicks have like the it's the draft lottery. Yeah, if you didn't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I always get excited for it. It's kind of the time where I wish the Pistons hadn't made the playoff had made the playoffs because would I rather get swept by Giannis in the first round and just totally demoralized, or uh, would I rather have a TV show tonight for ten minutes where I have a chance that I can get the number one pick? <laughs> there you go. The uh, I would rather be. Uh, my answer is I'd rather have a chance tonight, uh, even though we would have barely any chance to get the first pick. They kind of redid the odds so that. Um, the, the first overall pick's not guaranteed, almost guaranteed. Like the odds are the Knicks and the Suns and the Cavs have the best three odds. It's 14%. And I think the lowest the Knicks can go is fifth. So they're definitely going to get the pick. <laughs> it's pretty much like the uh, draft lottery for Zion. I mean, there's a bunch of good players, so if you get any of the top three picks, you're good. But I think Zion Williamson is the player that most is going like, to move the needle as far as like getting fans excited and even just like, household fans. Um... You, uh, you could have started with this. Brett got engaged, went to Chicago. Oh, yeah. I was Woo! supposed to say that, or if it was private, yeah. but whatever. He, uh, Sorry, bitches. You got engaged. He was in, uh, <laughs> Sorry, bitches. As if just now their chance was over. Right, right, They still right, had a right. chance before this. Right. But now well, it's and I'm not down the aisle yet, so, I mean. <laughs> uh, uh, best offers available. Right. Or best boobs available. Right. Yeah, maybe that. Um. Uh, uh, yeah, so he was in Chicago, uh, caught two of the Cubs games, stayed for all, of course, the true fan, he stayed for the whole game, um, nine, all nine innings for the 7 nothing loss, and then all 15 innings for the 3-2 win. Four and a half hours, 41 degrees, and raining, and I could not have been happier. It was only four, it was like four and a half hours? 
Yeah, it was, it was fucking one to one. I feel like that's like a regular baseball game this morning. Uh, <laughs> that's what it feels like. Yeah, it's normally about three. So yeah, it's about an hour and a half oh. longer. So it's actually about a game and a half. It yeah, sense because it went a game and a half long. So, but yeah, you pretty much have six innings there. Where I mean, the Cubs yeah. are at home, so in the bottom. So you have six innings where you're waiting, like, oh, we're gonna get the walk off. We yeah. yeah. finally got the walk off. We so. had bases loaded in the eleventh and in the thirteenth. Didn't do anything. It was fucking brutal. Oh. And then uh, Contreras hits a walk off, so I was not quite for that. It was a good time. Um, yeah, so that was that was cool. Go Cubs! Go, go. Got this hat up there. It's snazzy. I know some of y'all think. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, what, what, what you got next on here? Um. Let me see. Uh, Liverpool, I guess we can go to Liverpool. Yeah. We talked about them last week. Uh, it was better news. Um, yeah. <laughs> Liverpool um, last week had that crazy comeback. And, yeah. then, th- and then this week, um, I think they had their final matches was like EPL, right? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, the third best season in EPL history. And they came in second behind Man City because of the way soccer does draws and the points, how that works and everything. Well, the same thing as hockey does draws. Right. Well, at one point, but, uh, and then overtime losses. Not soccer, but yeah. Um, no, yeah. But yeah, it was nuts. Uh, we had one loss on the entire season. One. And didn't win, did not win the league. Uh, absolutely absurd. And there's no playoffs. So it's not like you, know, you just had this awesome season and then fumbled in the playoffs. And then it's just the end of the season. I think that's kind of uh, something where American fans who aren't fans of soccer would kind of point to and be like, so you had fewer losses, but because we have a game that has ties, your season ends in what should have been... Arguably, right. uh, but I guess because Man City had more losses than you guys, you just have more. Yeah. You had more draws, so yeah. I mean that's that's obviously disappointing. That'd kind of be like um, it is historic, though. It's not that's yeah. It's kind of I like, like the way they do it though, because it's like if you had the best, you you already had the best season. You're the, that's it. You see, some of these other teams, you know, these eight teams being one teams and all that shit. I get it. It's playoffs. It's a lot more affordable drama, but I mean that can. I don't know. I I, I kind of like both ways. I like. I'm not saying I want one. One one hundred percent of the way or the other, but it's kind of both. it's kind of when something in sports happens and everyone kind of not that everyone's like talking about this, but when everyone rushes to change the rules and it's like this doesn't happen all the time. This is like never happened before and probably wouldn't yeah. happen again. Oh, absolutely, you're totally right. Because if you look at the even the third best team, the third best team was like twenty points behind. Yeah, uh, something. Like, I think it was Chelsea maybe or, or yeah, Tottenham. Chelsea on one of the two. Yeah, Chelsea yeah, made a huge like, push and. Um, yeah, fuck Man United. They didn't come to top four, so they're not invited to the Champions League next year. It'd be fucking awesome. We can all fucking enjoy ourselves now. Um, God, I hate the fucking team. <laughs> but, anyways, um, so yeah, actually, I, I was at Disney one time with Ashley's family, Ashley's my girlfriend, and they are from Liverpool. So they come over, we're waiting in line for fucking forever to fucking Disney or any theme park for some fucking reason. You pay $100 for waiting in line for five hours. And, uh, so we're sitting there, and this kid has a big jersey on, and <laughs> her, her uncle or whatever is like, I'm, like, really going to, like, call child services for, like, talking to you. Like, this is, <laughs> how dare they let him out in public with that? That looks just so awful. You might as well cover him in fucking park. So gross. But anyway, they don't, they don't, they don't like him, but, uh, yeah. Um, so I guess, sorry, yeah. everybody, I guess I might be a soccer fan for football. <laughs> but, um, football? Um... Yeah, uh, Orlando City lost again. Uh, start, not, started off decent. It hasn't been going so well lately. Their form is pretty poor, as you would say in soccer terminology. Um, yeah, I just learned that when you have the win-win, draw-draw loss, it starts on the left and goes to the right. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's really interesting. I read a book. You learn something new every day. What's a book? Um, <laughs> a line score. Okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I'm... Uh, uh, as far as baseball goes, too, he's got the Cubs game going on right now. Um, both the people we were talking about last week still unsigned. I, I think it's going to go uh, pretty far into the season now until oh, uh, and, uh, yeah, yeah, until injuries knocked up and everything Kimball. like that. Um, I don't think there's been too much. I mean, you guys had uh, you won two out of three against the Brewers, so you guys are yeah. still looking good. Our first place in the division, the Brewers, speaking of signed for ages, they signed Gio Gonzalez. I'm actually a huge fan of his. He's the one who shut us down in the, the Friday game that I went to. Um, he was kind of the big, the first big, I'd say, sign, big signing to kind of make an impact this year. Like, you know, Kimball still on sign, those guys. Um, Bumgarner might get traded, uh, or probably will get traded, you never know. You fucking see what happens, so. That, yeah. that would be a pretty big pickup as well. Um, some good Detroit or Michigan, uh, news. Uh, <laughs> we'll get to the bad news in a second, I just, I just remembered. <laughs> Let's start with the good news first. Uh, yeah, the good news, um, do you know what the good news is? There's not really, no, I, no, I, I, I was just going to talk about, um, usually when you draft a guy number one overall, it takes years before you get into, uh, 
see any production on the field, but the guy we drafted, Casey Mize, he's either Auburn or Cubs, and I don't have my laptop here. Oh, for, for baseball. Okay. Yeah, for baseball. Um, there, I think uh, it's Auburn. Yeah, I think uh, I think he might get called up this year. He already has a no hitter right now. Um, there's one no hitter so far, and they're comparing him to like Vlad Guerrero as far as like it's pretty obvious that this guy. Yeah, well, as far as like talent wise, he shouldn't be where he is now. He's playing in a lot. Oh, okay, okay. I thought you meant senior. I was like, oh, no, 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 no junior, yeah. Okay. So there you go. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll power through. Good luck. Uh, it's not a great division, so. Yeah, the Twins are at the top, which I was surprised to see. Uh, yeah, all right, Gene, but Barrios is pitching his fucking face off. Their offense has been a pleasant surprise. You see Good Crow not even being great. Big Buxton is the one who has proof their RBI. It's fucking insane. Well, um, Mother's Day was yesterday. I think my mom was watching. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms. It was on Sunday, but Happy Mother's Day. Oh, yeah. What's uh, all the, Tuesday? All those, <laughs> all those moms out there. Cheers. Um, and cheers to Clip of the Week. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> What was that? Uh, Monday was yesterday. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, oh, yeah, the the bad news. Uh, everybody knows my public love for John Beeline. <laughs> I still contend that he's a uh, top five coach uh, in college right now. He's a, he was a Michigan head coach. Yeah, he was the Michigan uh, basketball head coach, and uh, he took the Cavaliers job. So I can only imagine what they paid him. I have to imagine. He's not on my laptop. I can only imagine, <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine what they're paying him to live in Ohio. Um, to coach the Cavaliers. I mean, I guess if they get the number one pick, that'll be something decent. And um, they got they got the uh, Alabama third guard um, in the draft last year. But I mean, it, it just, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It, if you talk about like, a team that has that, that's so far away, I mean, at least yeah. if, at least if you're the Knicks, you have a chance for like free agents to go there. Or or I mean, who's gonna go to Cleveland? I mean, you're not gonna get another LeBron James that's born there. Um, you never know, man. I mean, yeah, that's that's one way to look at it. You never know. That's not very good, like strategy moving forward. <laughs> well, you, your strategy was just never going to happen. So I like to at least say you don't know. But there you go. I guess yeah, you don't know. Best best worst option. There you go. Um, yeah. So now we have uh, Raptors and Bucks and uh, Warriors and uh, Trailblazers. You have a prediction. I don't even remember what our predictions were. Um, oh, I think I said. Uh, I think I said Bucks Warriors, but I could easily be wrong. But. That's Oh, well, for the, I, I don't know if we need one. I know I said Bucks Sixers for the Eastern Conference Finals, depending on where they were, you know what I mean? Yeah, we'll yeah. um, Then I think, gun to my head, I think it's the Warriors as well, but I, I couldn't, I don't remember. But, yeah. There's, um, I, I think the Warriors win is probably like, I think everybody's going to say at least six, but I, I, I'll go ahead and say Warriors five, man. I, I don't know. I think the Trailblazers are going to win tonight, to be honest. Okay, that, that'll be their one, then. Yeah, I mean, it, it could go... Um, in, 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 uh, Oakland? Sorry yeah, for I mean, all you guys up there who didn't know where Golden State was. You claim to be Golden State fans. Yes, you play in Oakland. Yeah. So you know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Durant's not playing, and uh, I think if they're going to get one, um, they'll be with Durant out. I think uh, they'll That's take point. They'll take game one, and then I think they'll take one of the next two games, uh, or one of the next games that they have at home. I hope it goes to seven at this point. Like I said, um, once the basketball season starts winding down, it's just be baseball for a couple months. I uh, I just want as much basketball as possible, so I'm rooting for everything to go to game seven. All right. And then uh, in the, yeah, the Eastern District, I'm kind of up for game seven there as well. Um, so, I mean, either, either team I can see winning. I, I would say Portland is probably the worst team of the four that are left, but it doesn't mean that they're, they're obviously one of the top four teams. So. You can almost argue Milwaukee is. The worst team, though? Yeah, I mean they've they've I gotten mean, they've gotten to the East Finals so far, and they don't even have what, like their third best player, uh, Malcolm Brogdon. He's going to come back. Right. I mean, there you go. Well, he's coming back. So I think honestly, I think well, the Warriors are probably the most talented, and then I would go. It's pretty much going to be Kawhi versus Giannis because the rest of the supporting cast are on both of those guys. I think it'll be interesting in the off season because a lot of it depends on what happens from where these guys are going to go as free agents. Because Clay Thompson's a free agent, Kevin Durant's going to be a free agent. Um, um. A bunch of the Sixers are going to be free agents, so like where you where you finish in the playoffs, like could depend. Like, am I going to stay with this team and they're going right. to build around me, right. or uh, or are we going to? That's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like that shot that that shot that Kawhi hit could literally be the difference of him staying in Toronto or yeah. thinking that it's not good enough. And I mean that kind of happened to to Demar Derozan, right? Just because he's never really made it to you know the. Finals yeah, so they they made it farther this year, or further this year without Rosen than they ever made it with those two together. So you have to give credit to the GM. They had a 
they had a nucleus together. It was really similar uh, with those two guys to me when they had with uh, Lillard and McCollum. Like it's 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 been getting us far in the playoffs, but it's not good enough. So they he took the initiative, he blew it up. I mean, it's not that hard of a decision to trade for Kawhi Leonard, who's like right. three player in the league. But still, a lot of people would have just like stayed pat and try to keep it going. Like the the Rockets after they lost their their owner said that they're gonna keep it, they're gonna keep everything together with James Harden. I mean, that's like an impossible contract to move anyways. But they're gonna try to keep it together and win. And then, if you think about it, with the Rockets, it is smart to keep it together. They took the Warriors to six games, and Kevin Durant is, a lot of people think he's going to leave. So, I mean, next year, if the Warriors don't have Durant, and then however it shakes out, you kind of keep the team together. Who, who would you take right now in a, in a seven-game series? Would you rather have Kawhi or LeBron? Kawhi. Uh, it's not even that close to me. Uh, well, I wouldn't say that it's not even like, that close, but I think I would take Kawhi over anybody that's left in the playoffs right now. And I mean, if you're talking about like peak LeBron years, like in the no, no, right now, yeah, no, right now, no, right now, I would take a couple of the guys that are in the playoffs. I would rather have um, rather have Giannis right now. I would rather have um, Kawhi, um, and I would rather have Durant. I mean, that's that's probably it though. I would I would take LeBron over mostly everybody else. But um, yeah, the the Lakers hire Frank Vogel after uh, having meetings with Ty Lue that seemed to go on for like four days, and it's pretty much just like, what's the meeting? Like, you know who he is? Like, what's your plan? We have LeBron. That's the plan. So, <laughs> yeah. what what's going on in these meetings? It's like, hey, you know who I am. You saw what we did in Cleveland, and you know LeBron likes me. What else do you have to talk about? <laughs> pretty much what what I heard when things fell through is they didn't want to give him five years. They just wanted to give him the same amount of time that was on LeBron's contract. So oh, okay. It's kind of weird for like one of the premier franchises in the NBA to be going cheap on years because that's all you have to do to get the coach you want. It's not money. Yeah, at that point too, though, I guess what's the difference with Frank Vogel and Ty Lue? It's not like the coaching is going to be that much of it. One, one has a pretty big playoff record. I mean, Vogel is run without well, lunch. He makes the playoffs every single year with the Pacers. I, I, I'd venture to say Vogel probably has, what, 30 playoff wins? 20? No. They were out in the second round most years, I think. All right, I so that's at least them. four. <laughs> I know, I mean, like, it's four, it's four right, right. probably eight or 12. Probably at least eight or 12. All right, so okay, 20? That's a piece. That's more than... That's, is that more than... Yeah. No, well, Ty Lewis in the finals like, every year. He also had LeBron, so... That's, I would give more credit to... To Vogel? To Vogel, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he was... And then he was also going against LeBron the whole time, too. So... One one guy is the difference of the two is having LeBron. So I mean, Vogel has LeBron. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll kind of solve that. Um, <laughs> but I don't think the difference between them making the playoffs last year and and next year is going to be coaching. Uh, I think it's LeBron staying healthy and if they can get somebody to go there, um, if they can get like Clay Thompson to go That's there. Or, there. I don't know if I'm either way on that side there because I mean, yeah, kind of there, man. Like, I I just don't know as far as like. I know coaching matters in the NBA, but it's it's in the margins. Like the, the people who are winning the games are the players. Like I said earlier, when when coaches are drawing up all these plays at the end of the games, when it breaks down, it's Kawhi Leonard that gets trapped in the corner and makes a crazy three. You know, the uh, was it Nick Nurse or um, I don't know if the play broke down because Kawhi got the ball. No, I'm not saying yeah, but I'm saying like they take the time and the time out to draw the play up, and then he kind of just does whatever he wants, and the talent wins out. It's not like they, they I would coach. say that's a lot le- more rare than, than common. I would say, I mean, for shit to go awry that much, or, you know, more often than not, for shit to hit the fan during a, a fall play, I, I would say. I don't know. Well, it has. I mean, it has to also do with like substitution patterns and stuff like that throughout the game. I understand that, and 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 like uh, practice habits and all that kind of stuff. I just think uh, when you have LeBron James, the difference is. The difference of him winning a championship is not between Ty Lue and David Platt. It's just other circumstances that happen to happen. Um, I, I, it's going to be interesting, though, to see with all these players that are getting better, and obviously LeBron's getting older, if he ever is going to be able to win another championship. You don't want to count him out just because he had one bad year in L.A. Everyone kind of thought about this as a throwaway year anyways. But you see Milwaukee. Milwaukee's going to get better. In 76ers, I think a couple of those guys are going to wind up leaving. Um, yeah, but it, it's gonna be hard, man. Especially, especially in the West, like they're they're not that close to those teams that are up there. Um, 
there's two cents on, on what Durant said about the Blazers on the Collins show. I, I was just thinking of what I was forgetting that I forgot. I got you, buddy. That was what I re- I got you, buddy. We're, we're here. Um, and that's, that's more your style anyway, podcast and NBA. I'd like to hear your take on No, that. yeah, because uh, cause Stretch, Stretch brought it up in the group chat. And I was kind of remember, trying to remember what he was talking about, and I literally like went back and re- re-listened to the podcast. It's he's And they're sitting like what, how we are. They're, yeah. He's pretty much like laughing at him. He's like disrespecting him. If, if, if you hear it, um, essentially uh, McCollum's talking, talking to Durant, and, and Durant pretty much tells him, like, y'all are not good enough to ever win. Yeah. yeah. It's, and he's it's, like, well, you know, I think we got a good team. He's like, yeah, but you're not good. Yeah, it's, it's CJ, Mc, good. CJ McCollum has a podcast, like you said, and the gist of it was what you said, but he's like, He's like, you know, we were close, we we're up there, and LeBron, I mean, uh, Kevin Durant pretty much says to him, like, oh, just play basketball, you know, don't worry about what's going on at the top. Oh, yeah, that's right, don't, don't worry He's about like, it. He's like, don't worry yeah. about what's going on at the top. It's just so and, which, I mean, Durant's not playing in this game, but Jesus that's even, that's even, uh, you're getting me hyped up for this game tonight now, I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I, I think, oh, man, I really hope the Blazers win now that you reminded me of that. Because he's really disrespectful the way he's talking to him. It's kind of annoying how they're like, I don't know if they're being comfortable on the podcast, but they're just like eating chips or something. Like, you not eat chips in my ear. Isn't it an ASMR podcast? I don't want to hear this. It's like, yeah, it's delicious. It's, good. it's always sunny seeing yeah, that as well. All my sunny fans are sunny fans. Um, so you, you, you. No, no, ASMR. ASMR is like when you eat into a microphone. Oh, okay. I was saying there's a great, it's always sunny. Oh, okay. I thought you well. said the ASMR stood for always sunny in Philadelphia. I thought that was even a not, not, not enough letters. <laughs> And different letters. Um, but, yeah, yeah, that's going to be even more excited for the game now. Um, yeah, he's, like, blatantly disrespecting him by saying, like, you guys aren't good enough. And then we call him, like, no, you know, we're, like, right there and all that. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. I kind of wish Grant was playing now, but. Um, I, I, I still think more. I mean, it'd be, it'd be cool for him to kind of rub it in his face or whatever, but. At, at the end, even if they win this game, Durant's still gonna have the the, the last time. Like, well, like, I, I wasn't playing that game. Well, yeah, but also then the Rocket series kind of um, gave credibility to what a lot of people are saying. When it just was like, I was on Durant's side when he left Oklahoma City and went to the Warriors. I was one of the people. And the people were calling him like a coward. Like I worked with this guy. He's like, hey, do you think Durant's a coward? I'm like, what kind of word is that to use for somebody who changes their job location? So like, yeah, you know, he's afraid of competition. I'm like, he plays in the NBA, like. Um, so I was more on Durant's side, but then it gives credibility when they beat the Rockets in six games. So whether or not you think that's the Rockets' fault or the Rockets' fault at the end of the game, uh, when you rely on getting calls all year and then you don't get the calls, it's kind of your fault. But but for them to beat the, the Rockets without uh, Durant even there, uh, kind of lends credibility. Well, and then, how many games did Durant have for that series? Just just the last game, and then like the last quarter and right, so, half. So five quarters. Yeah, yeah, pretty much five quarters. But so they really should have won. The Rockets really should have won Game Five, and they had no chance to prepare. They have to switch their offense up, which they were running like almost exclusively through Durant. Oh, so it's it's bad that Durant was on there and switch their offense up. No, no. What I'm saying is, um, Golden State had the, the game. Oh, Golden State, oh, okay. the game that the Rockets should have won was when Golden State has to switch it up in the third quarter and start running a different offense. Essentially, okay. game, game six um, when they had a whole like two days to prepare for it, it was a different thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good series. I think both of them are gonna be really good. Um, while while stretches away, do, do we think that the Knicks own the Suns? I don't know. I don't do you know. Think they, do they think like uh, like an NFL picker? Like I, I don't know what I'm rooting for more. Either for them to be the fifth pick, or for them to be the first pick. Like, yeah, yeah, they're yeah. gonna they're gonna pick like. Uh, well, you know what's gonna happen? They're gonna get second and then blame everything on the fact that they couldn't get Zion. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. oh, well, it wouldn't have been there if we had the, the guy who was the best player on the team. It's just so funny when the Knicks are bad. So I don't really, I mean, as a fan of, team, as team, as a fan of teams that are all pretty much bad always, it's yeah. fun to have, like, somebody to look down on. Like, for, for for a while, it was uh, the Browns. We can't do that anymore. Thank so you. Thank you, I think. <laughs> I, ha- I, ha- I have the Knicks left. Um, yeah. I love their colors. I'm, I'm trying to think um, who they can pick. Because if they get Zion, they're going to be so annoying, too, like, before the season even starts. Um, oh, shoot. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, they're definitely going to do the right thing. They'll definitely get the yeah. number one overall pick and yeah, not mess base, it up at baseball. all. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Uh, PGA Championships coming up starting uh, Thursday. Tiger's the favorite. Somebody already put a ten thousand dollar bet on him. Uh, I think it was a ten or forty. I don't know. I saw somebody put like, a ten thousand dollar bet on Tiger. Must be, must be nice to have ten thousand dollars to lose this bet. 
Uh, Justin Thomas is out. Thank God, that guy's a fucking bitch. I can't stand that guy. But did he eat at someone's sandwich or something? In the yep. Room? Yep. Yep. He, uh, <laughs> no, he, he is did. fucking he's rude all, all, all the time to the fucking fans. It's like he, um, one instance, he, he's, he, after he already hit the ball, he's already in his back swing, and some, somebody will get in the stand, and he goes, alright, have a nice day, you're out of here. Like, it's not during his swing or anything like that, like the ball was a hundred yards away, and the guy was getting the stand, and he kicked him out. And they're allowed to just say, this guy's too bad. Okay, yeah, never mind. He's an asshole. All right. <laughs> he yells at the guy. He, he's, he's very, very pompous. He lo- he just looks like a crap. I mean, he's, he's like, a golfer, that though. He's never... Yeah. He's a golfer, like, that's what they look like. <laughs> but half, the, half of it's the clothes they're wearing. Brooks Kepka doesn't look, look like a crack guy. John Daly doesn't look like a crack guy. Tiger Woods doesn't look like a crack guy. Fair enough. But, anyways, but, yeah, I mean, I, I do see what you're saying. I do see what you're for sure. Brooks um, Kepka kind of does look like a crap boy. I, I guess. Yeah, he's in Florida State. Like he definitely used to wear like the boat shoes and the and the and the uh, whatever. The I don't know. The only reason I don't like him is because he's Florida State, but he's soft on golf. Bubba, yeah, he does. He doesn't look. He does look like one. I don't think he does. I think he looks like that that like wannabe rebel on the outside, but he's just as pussy as those other fucking guys. Like I, I could beat a Bubba Watson without that. Rory looks like a girl. Rory can look like his curly hair. He kind of looks like a he girl. He looks like an Irish girl. Uh, oh, I know he's an Irish guy. He, he doesn't Irish look like a fry guy. Smith kind of does. Um, but anyway, do you now have? We got, uh, now that we've talked about all the fat boys and girls, do you have any picks? Who do we have? Pick who is going to win? Who is going to win? Yes. Uh, you know, who's been playing really good golf? Um, who does look like an, an older fry guy? Webb Simpson has been fucking solid all season. It would not surprise me to see him win it. Um, and man, I. Is is this the tournament where Ricky finally steps up? Is this going to be? We we can say that for years now. We're going to probably continue to say it, but I think uh, I would hope Ricky does it. And maybe I don't. Know, I I would say if I had to bet, I'd say Webster or, or Rory. Probably Rory. Um, guy's a fucking stud, and my boy Spieth has been absolutely shitting the bet this year, yeah, so I can't bet on him. I, I was going to mention that Spieth. Um, Speed was supposed to be. He was coming out so strong in the last couple of years, and then he hasn't really done too much. Like no. he's always like one of the top favorites, and then yep. he always underperforms. It's really weird. Like well, well the past couple of years, because there were yeah. two, there, three years ago, he wasn't losing to anybody. That right. guy would not miss a button for, for fucking anything. It's weird to me how that happens because it feels like in golf. I mean, they're all at the highest level, so it's in the margins. But right. it's like once you once you get to a certain level, you, how do you forget how to play golf? Like, and... And uh, one, one interesting thing I heard was that he's not, he's, it's not one thing, because he's not just missing left or just missing right, he's missing all over the place, so this is a, this is kind of a potential big problem. Thank you so much, Rick. Uh, I, I guess I kind of get it, because I don't know about you, but sometimes when I play, I'm like, was I better when I first started than I am now? <laughs> I, I had a really good round uh, the last time I played, and by really good, I mean I was like close to 100. Hey, that's uh, all I asked for, man. It sounds funny to people who don't golf, but it's, it's, no, it's, it's hard to break 100. Golf is extremely hard. And here's to those of us who have all at once. <laughs> yeah, we were at, um, we were at, uh, what's that college? We were at Eastwood, and, um, I don't know if you play Eastwood that much. Um, on hole 17, if you don't know. I know, I do. Yeah. Oh, but, um, like, I do yeah, hole seventeen, um, the hilly one right before um I'm sorry for the last hole, but uh my buddy chipped in from what had to be like sixty yards. It was insane. Jesus. Yeah, it was it was like it, he, he obviously hits it and it's like up over the hill. It lands, you're like, Oh wow, that's a really fucking good shot. And it's rolling like that. So it, goes in. it hits the stick and bounces in. Like he oh, even out he, he was excited. I had pulled my shirt away and I was like, Oh, <laughs> Obviously, it's after 17 holes, you know, you've been drinking. And in East, when nobody gives a shit. shit yeah. After that, we were the only ones out there. Uh, yeah. It was $12. Can't do that. You paid 11 to <laughs> fucking hate that. <laughs> I don't get it. Um, so it's not, I'm not saying he's the best or anything. As a like, layout, it's it's actually quite good. Um, but it does not it. drink. Well, I mean, just don't go after No, you, you can go after a fucking Sahara. You can go after... Ten straight days, and it's still muddy no matter what. I don't know if it's, 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 it's never it's never like cut that. well. It's just awful. Yeah. I probably golf there probably. I I probably say fifteen times I've golfed out there, and it's been in bad. I saw photos on my phone to remind me of two years. Like I opened up the the uh, the, the the side thing to get some sand out. It's just water. 
what the fuck is going on here? Yeah, I just have a table. Uh, after, right after he chips in from like 60 yards, I think I made what had to be like 18 foot putt. Like back to back shots. Um, so, anytime. That's any, awesome. Yeah, anytime you have a good That's probably awesome. one of the best putts I've ever had. Um, any, anytime you have a good round, it just keeps you coming back. And then you have a terrible round, and you're like, I hate this game. And then you're going to play on three weeks. And and I can't, can't stop hitting the ground, or you're like, I can't stop doing this, and then the next time. Um, but anyways, yeah, for, for the PGA Tour, Tiger's the favorite, and I know I said it last time, I don't think it's worth the odds as far as um, him being the favorite, and then he winds up winning, so but no matter what the odds are, if you pick the winner, I mean, it works out. Um, it's a tough thing to bet on, man. It's, it's almost it's similar to NASCAR, there's so many fucking people. Um, Nobody's going to crash into you on the golf course, though, and fuck up your... Uh, I bet you can't know it, but I mean, I, I would say it's... It's inexpensive because like certain players play play better at certain courses due to the, the layout. It's like certain drivers, like yeah. the Jeff, like Jeff Wood was all I mean, he's a Hall of Fame driver, but if you could always kind of pick him in, in, in almost any race, those road races, like you're you're picking Jeff. Like and, yeah. and anything on not road, but you know, like the, the non oval races for everybody else. So, like yeah. the, the road track where you're it looks like an Indian race. Jeff Ford was a fucking master at, at all. Like high field ticket. Yeah, yeah, it was like high four. They uh, like you drive around a puck puck course. All the last couple, the last couple of tournaments where I, whoever I picked, I think I picked Dustin Thomas in the last one. Yeah, some fucking. Um, I think. Um, oh, uh, Jack Waterhead! There's balls bouncing around in the thing. The players are going places. Um, but uh, yeah, every time I've, I've uh, and he hasn't really, he hasn't won the last two or three, but. I'll always look up and I'm like, yeah, I don't know if he's a good Obviously, he won last year, so I think I'm going to go with him. I don't know how you... Okay. I know Tiger's the favorite as far as, like, the whole Yankees and Red Sox thing where people are going to bet on him so they lower the odds and it kind of makes him the default favorite. It's like 8-1. to one. That's just... That's kind of crazy. But, um... I mean, especially to win back-to-back would be amazing. Like, especially after the first one. Sorry, I'm fucking texting the wrong person. I don't know what the fuck's going on now. Oh, yeah. Stubbs, I'm sorry. I'm not ignoring my job, but I have to text you. Um, yeah, 20 minutes until the draft lottery. I don't know how they make a whole production out of this show, though. It's literally like a, a pregame show for it. It's like, you get the odds, you pick the balls. Um, is there, there, I feel like there should be like some different kind of way that they, uh, that they decide who's number one There's overall. There's something else a lot like this, too. It's like, uh, Always wait. Oh, like, oh well, the Super Bowl. They'll say the like, kickoff. Oh, well, let's let's say Super Bowl on six thirty. It doesn't say coverage. It's a kickoff. It's anything. They're not kicking that ball until seven forty-five. People are like, oh my god, it's at six thirty. I don't know. If they're like, are you? Fucking they want all the they can get. Should have the owners, whoever have like the best odds. You have like uh, a dunk contest, but it's the owners. You have the trampoline, and then whoever has the best odds gets. <laughs> Whoever has like the top, the top three teams, like the Knicks and the Cavs and the Suns. Did you just invest in like a gigantic like hip surgery company or something like they get, that? They, 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 they get, they, they, they get like a a better trampoline or the trampoline's closer, and the worst odds are further away. And then whoever has the best luck. <laughs> <laughs> something more interesting than balls bouncing around. I get it. Uh, it's serious and everything. Well, it's 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 fair. Dunk contest. Mark Cuban would win though. Yeah, Mark Cuban. Uh, probably. I don't know. It'd be, I think it'd be kind of funny if like Dan Gilbert went up there right before he did the 360 LeBron. LeBron does it. Yeah, he, does, he does the Eagle Dollar block off Fuck the out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Get out of here. Yeah. Never again. And then, and then they count it. They're like, yeah, it was fair. You should have seen him coming. Thinking more about it, the Cavs better not get the damn number one pick. Like, it, how how much help can a damn team get? Who do they take the one year? Uh, Alex Len or something like that? A guy who's not even the league. Not number one overall, no. They, they who was said, number one overall? It was like Alex Len. Anthony Bennett, yeah. Yeah, from, from uh, Canada Alex and uh, UNLV, I think is where he went. Yeah, not now. Oh, my God. And then, uh, well, they, they picked, well, what's the face of the fucking, uh, what was it, Minnesota for a minute? Um, it, it, Anthony yeah, Anthony Wiggins. Wiggins, yeah. Wiggins, Wiggins. I'm pretty oh, solid. Yeah, they trade him for Kevin Love. But you can't say so, I don't know, I fucking... Well, Wiggins never really worked out. I thought he was. They were. They do this to a lot of players. They overhype them. They call them like the Canadian LeBron. Um, oh yeah. Which is just weird because he's not even the same body. He looks the same now as he did when he came to the league. So unless they were expecting the game in seventy pounds. Honestly, this is what I think you and I were arguing about this um, like, a few, like a month or so ago. I, I don't know if I even want everyone picking the NBA draft. Like, or if he wants to be, everyone picking the NBA draft. Like, he, he, 
That, honestly, like, those first 20 picks are just fine. Anything after that, you gotta get lucky. No, the first 20 picks. It's like the first three picks that are good. Yeah. Yeah. From what every, every single year, everybody's always said that, and then every single year, I'm like, oh my god, this guy went fucking 17. No, that's, that that's, I don't know, though. You, you, you well, have to, my laptop side out. No, I mean, that's, I mean, you get lucky if you get a guy after, like, 15. Like, you got, Donovan Mitchell was, like, 13, and that was, like, crazy that he actually fell that far. Like, 15 years, like, they passed on him. You got Luke Kennard. He's See, never, there you go. You never have enough white shooting guards from Duke. Um, instead of, uh, I feel like this entire world is just like a simulation just made to drive me crazy about sports. I hate Duke and the draft. Luke Kennard, a shooting guard from Duke, and he's white. Um, and he's white, yeah. Oh, I didn't give really me a break. Uh, <laughs> you know, if I see from the Cowboys, you completely run past your fucking team. Who are you talking about, Jordan Lewis? No, he's black. No, I know, I think you're talking about other Michigan players. No, you. You said and he's white, I said so then he can go play safety for the Cowboys and get hot half all the time. Check it. Oh. But anyways, uh, Stuart chiming in it all over on the old tube of views. Anything going on in uh, NFL right now? It's kind of a dead time uh, after the draft. There's, oh. a bunch, there's a bunch of free agents still unsigned. I know Ben Watson went to the Patriots, so he's going to be the Super Bowl on the team. Without season. a doubt. Do you know yeah. where he went to college? Uh, not my no, I'm not. Yes. <laughs> no, he was in Georgia. I see, see. Yeah, that would be a long time ago, though, right? It was a while. He's old as shit. He's, he's got so, what did he have? Like five catches in college? He was doing like a stupid uh, triple option. <laughs> oh, he's coming to catch all yeah, uh, the, the craziest thing ever to me is Calvin Johnson going to Georgia Tech. Like, what does that, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, that is kind of nuts. That's, uh, I don't even know what you would even compare that to. That would be like, uh, there's nothing you could compare it to. Uh, the, the Dolphins, um, the Dolphins signed, uh, Mark Walton, they went to Miami. He got arrested, oh, he got arrested yeah. like, three times. Three times, yeah. I, like, dro- I dropped it in my 16-team league fantasy football league, because I thought nobody else watched you on football. I thought I was being, <laughs> thought I was being smart, and he never really started the game. He got arrested a bunch of times. Uh, uh, not, stop me if you, or don't stop me if you've heard this before. Another Cowboys defensive lineman is in legal trouble, and probably going to face jail time for this big bar brawl that the, the video just came out. Um... So, yeah, he's probably going to face 60 days in jail. Uh, yeah, Tyrone Crawford. Gonna be a fun so we're going to be, we're going to have, th- these three right here are going to be starting to defensive line the Cowboys this year. That's going to suck, that's going to suck so bad for him, too. Like, 60 days in jail for us is way different than for him. He's like, what he's leaving behind is a lot better probably than what we're leaving I don't know. I got a fiance that I'm leaving behind now. Yeah, I, gotta, I, mean, I, gotta, I have to say that. To he's say that he's rich, though. I mean, it sucks for us, but I mean, you get 60 days off of work. I mean, it's kind of like a vacation. For him, it's like, damn, dude, I could be like, I'm rich, I could be doing anything right now and stay in jail, eating syrup sandwich. I get four weeks paid vacation, so after that, I would probably be in trouble. So I'd have 12 days where I'd be fucked. Yeah, I get zero days. I still miss being a server in Buffalo. It's the best, man. It's awesome. Yeah, you say that now until you. I really do, honestly. I I would. Man, it's. There's obviously perks, like, kind of the ones I just said, but I fucking. It's It's gotta be weird. Like, I've never, ever been on the Monday through Friday, 9 to 5 schedule. Dude, I get made fun of every day in my work because I didn't know what hump day was. Everybody's like, oh, you know what hump day was? I'm like, I never had a fucking 9 to 5 Monday through Friday. I was a bartender. The middle of my week was Friday. Like, like, I don't give a shit. I don't fucking know that. That's like me. I don't even know what day of the week it is. You're making fun of me, but (laughs) it doesn't really matter to me what day of the week it is. Right. I know Monday's hot pot, Thursday's Korean barbecue. I get that. Uh, Except Monday, Tipsy Tuesday, Wasted yeah. Wednesday, Thirsty Thursday, Fucking Friday, Shipping Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Yeah, there you go. Um, the thing that does suck, I get my Sundays off now because I've been there for a while. But, uh, yeah, I've never had, like, and that's why it sucks sometimes because I always watch the West Coast games. And everyone's like, oh, the game's starting too late. And then I was off, whenever I'm off on Sunday, and I'm like, damn, I was talking to stretch. I'm like, all the sports are over. It's like 9 o'clock. I, mean, I, have no, I have nothing left to watch. I'm going to be up for another eight hours. <laughs> you know, he says, watch horse, horse racing on Twin Spires. <laughs> Jesus. All right, well, we have 15 minutes until this draft. I don't even think we want to be live for this one. It's going to be fucking nuts unless stretch wants to, but, I mean... I mean, I'm, I don't think he wants to be doing this during the draft. So, do you guys have any, is there any, anybody who wants to, uh, comment? Like, I can't see any fucking comments. My thing's all fucked up, but. Is, it, is anybody sitting, 
you guys say anything you want to talk about or anything like that, please let our, our friends and friends know in the next five minutes, otherwise we kind of wind down here. Um, uh, we didn't really talk any about NHL. I mean, all I was going to say is the games have been awesome. It's crazy. They really have, man. Brewers That's kind of my off. commentary on it. It's awesome and it's crazy. That, but, that, um, that Blues uh, Shark series is going to be fucking awesome. The Bruins look like they're beating up on the on the Hurricanes. But uh, it's been a pretty awesome, yeah, uh, in the NHL Finals. I mean, that, just like any other year, it really hasn't let anybody down. Um, but there's no golden, you know, golden Knights or anything like that, but I, I think they're pretty fucking solid. Carolina's kind of that team. They have, like, the celebrations after the regular... I haven't seen them during the playoffs, but after the regular season game, they would do, like, some crazy celebrations and stuff. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of... I don't know. See, I have a lot of friends who are Bruins fans, but some of them I hate, and some of them... Yeah. Yeah, like, I'm like, I like this guy, so I kind of want the Bruins to win. Like, I like Paulie, I want the Bruins to win for him. But I have this asshole that comes into my work, and he always wears, he was wearing a Bruins jersey one day, and I'm like, hey, did you come in for the game? He's like, no, they played last night. And of course, I had money on the game, so I know they didn't play last night, they played tonight. And he's like, he's like, they don't play two nights in a row. And I was like, no, they played tonight. He's like, oh, trust me, I know. So I just took the remote and turned the game on. <laughs> So it's like guys like that, and then he's like, he does the same joke. It's like, dude, I see you every time you come into work. Hopefully, I never said where I work, but anyways, he uh, he comes in every time, and he's like, oh man, it's a disgrace. So Boston hasn't won a championship in like three months. And I'm just like, oh. <laughs> not only is it not not funny asshole type joke, uh, he doesn't every single time. You're guaranteed for me to lick the rim of your wine glass if you say that, <laughs> and then serve it to you. Have fun, fucking clown. <laughs> Piece of shit. Not that you ever did anything like that when you were <laughs> No, not at all. Actually, I've done it, but I've always said to people it to their face because they piss me off. All the Boston and, fans are going to get tested now? <laughs> yeah, for sure. No, I mean, I do it to friends and stuff because they piss me off. I just lick the rim of their, their pint glass and go, here, you guys, and buy them another one. But <laughs> fucking hilarious at the time. I always got to laugh. Oh, man, I feel like you're turning AC in here. It's awesome. It is. It's too hot. But, anyways, all right, well. Uh, you, if you want to have any, any, I'll give you the last closing words, and then I'll, I'll kind of close this out here. No, a um, couple of, like, downers. The whole Tiger Woods thing you were talking about golf. He has some, like, drunk driver thing. That's a mess, man. It looks like he served that guy that night, too, or he wasn't there. It's yeah. a whole fucking, it's a whole mess. There's, like, zero information. They're just throwing out a big-ass net. He could have served him that night, or he could have been three seats away. Yeah, so hopefully that doesn't, like, affect uh, someone died. But uh, on the sports end of things, hopefully it doesn't affect his PGA championship, bro. Maybe he's not thinking about that. Kristaps Porzingis. Uh, Porzingis. Kind of he, got, he got attacked by some... It sounds like something out of, like, a, a movie. He got attacked by some Russians while he was in a Latvian club or something like that. Um, that was just a couple of, like, news things. Um, NBA, yeah. Uh, watch the game tonight. Obviously, it's going to be awesome. Uh, we're getting ready to watch the lottery here right now. I'm still going back and forth whether I want the Knicks to get the first pick or not. I, I definitely know I don't want the Cavs to get it. it I, I will say this, not to go on for too much longer, but if, if the Suns do get it and they wind up getting Zion and they have DeAndre Ayton and, well, another, Ooh, they're like the same player. Another down, yeah, they might wind up trading Ayton uh, and Devin Booker. Um, you could trade Ayton, solid. You could trade Ayton for something. Uh, Josh Jackson they have, but he just got a, he got like a DUI or uh, save all like, the negative stuff at the end of the podcast. I think he just got like a, <laughs> or was it, it was, no, it was a felony escaping charge. I guess oh, they, nothing crazy. There, there's a charge for police. I never knew about Baker this. Baker Mayfield has that. So you're I guess it's like if you run away, it's called um, – if you run away eluding. from them. Yeah, eluding. But if you actually get away and they find you later, it's called escaping. So it's like – yeah. So it's like it's like that's kind of messed up. It's like if you get away, you should just get away. And then if you get away, it's even worse because now it's a felony. I so love to like, hear this from a judge. Hey, listen, Are I got serious? You know, uh, finders keepers, wet foot, dry foot, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, but yeah, it was like a felony. It said felony escaping charge. I mean, he got away! Obviously, he didn't escape. He yeah, obviously, he didn't escape, because otherwise, yeah, yeah, it'd be a felony caught charge. Right, right? yes, yes. It be got it. Falling, um, failing at escaping charge. Uh, this, yeah, so uh, that was pretty much it for the week. Congratulations again, Brett. Thanks, uh, I really appreciate it, guys. That, that really means a lot. Um, yeah, sorry, it's just kind of our, our kind of wing wing it show. I bought it because we're on it at like an absurd time, six forty, so the game has already started. So, um, but anyways, um, yeah, thank you guys as always. Really, really, really appreciate it. I'm not just saying that you guys fucking. I'm sorry I wasn't able to find. Oh, what's going on on my laptop? Prompts having back up by by next week. Uh, oh, but too, thank yeah. you guys again. Um, yeah, again, coming to you guys from uh, Public House and uh, Shamrock Clickers. Please come visit those places. They're fucking awesome. I'm gonna go have some drinks now. 
Uh, on behalf of the Traveling Drunks, Stretch, what's up, Predigans, and Marty, thank you guys again. Hope to see you next week. All right. Orlando City, not in Bundesliga. <laughs>